we are done with our custom connector. We have MuseFeed. Now let's actually get into the world of Power Apps and build ourselves an app and let's do some coolness here. Rightio, let's go the old blank phone layout. Alrighty, don't show me that again. All right, um, first up, what we need to do is connect to our lovely new connector. So if we go to the view menu, go to data sources and go add a data source, uh, we're not creating a new connection because we already made a connection. This is something I see newbie power app people, they make a lot of duplicate connections when they don't need to. If you look down here, you will find a connection called MuseFeed, which is based on the one that we just used to test. So I now bring in that muse feed. I also notice this happens with recently created connectors too, where the image is broken. Doesn't seem to cause it too much uh, problems though. Uh, so first let's just do this. Uh, I'm gonna insert myself an icon and I'll insert a re reload icon and I'll put it up in sort of the top right corner. And this is, this is basically what we're gonna use if you wanna manually refresh the feed. Eventually, like these apps would on start, run this but for now let's just put it here so on select first thing if I type in muse feed there is our muse feed so now you see why we have to so there is muse feed dot get feed that relates exactly to what I did when I created the connector and it simply doesn't take a parameter which is exactly what we want that's why we marked code as internal so muse feed get feed now we don't just want to do that we want to save the results in, into a collection so we're going to use the command clear collect and we'll call this just a feed, right? Clear collect feed and it's going to be the contents of whatever comes back from Muse feed. So let's actually test that. In fact, I don't need to go into preview to do that. Let's just run it. So you can see it's, I see the little I'm thinking and doing stuff happening. So let's run the search. Now allegedly, I've noticed this, sometimes it doesn't work first time. So let's see how we go. We now have a collection called feed and we have a look in here. Boom, we have data, excellent. So you are looking at the first five search results based on the Muse feed. Uh, I wanna call out a couple of things straight up. Number one, uh, we're gonna use the description column. Number two, we're going to use the list ID column in a little while. Uh, we are also going to use modified by, person who modified it, and last modified time. So they're the columns that really matter. And the final one is title. There it is. And you can see that depending on the type of content, like a document library will bring back, or actually a certain lists bring back different information, right? Based on um, what has been retrieved. So let's now do some awesomeness. First up, let's insert a gallery. So I'm gonna insert a gallery and I'm gonna use a blank flexible height gallery for this. Feeds are definitely, you wanna use flexible height galleries for reasons that will become clear later. So I am going to bring that on. Let's just drop it down. Let's assume that it was sort of the bottom two thirds of the page. Um, in the data tab, because we already have created our connection, I'm going to connect it to my feed collection. I'm now going to add a label. Let's insert a label. And it'll automatically bind it to one of the fields, which is probably the title field or the author field. Yeah, there it is, this item dot author. So just to be clear, if we go back to the collection, perhaps it just did it because it's the first one, it's used the author field. And Consequently, I can come in here and change that to, for example, this item dot title. Uh, I can also do it down here as well, right? In the actual, um, uh, the panel that relates to the um, properties for this, um, for this gallery. But actually what I'm gonna do for this first layout is this is gonna be the kind of, um, it's gonna be more like this. Um, so it's gonna say, um, this item dot modified by, I'm gonna use modified by, right? And then I'm gonna go and has updated, right? Um, in fact, let's do it this way. Updated by, modified by, then on, and now I'm gonna use this item, which is a built-in Oh, ampersand 
this item dot last modified time. Let's fix up the font so it's a little less kind of scary <coughs> as well and have a look at what we've done. So the font is going to go to about, I'm feeling like an 18 point font and that will do. So you can see updated by me on this time. Well, what have we updated? Well, let's insert another label. So let's go insert uh, label. Just make sure, by the way, always click the pencil to make sure you're on the first cell in the gallery. Um, insert label. And this time we're gonna put the title field in here. This item dot title. And we can see some stuff coming through. Now you can see already, and actually here's another handy hint, by the way, I'm gonna maximize this label. And over in the properties, I'm gonna set auto height to on. Okay, so if we go and have a look at this now, it won't make much difference, but this is in preview. You can see a whole bunch of stuff here, right? But let's make this a little bit smarter. If you recall, or maybe if you don't, but if you have a look back in our collection, just looking at the sample data, you can see that some of these entries have a description. So how about if there's a description, I want to show that. And if there's not a description, then I will fall back to the title field, this one down there. So let's do that. So if we come in here, I will do this. If is blank, so call the function is blank. What am I checking if is blank? It's gonna be this item dot description. So if the description is blank, then we wanna show the title. But if it's not blank, we want to show the description. And if I close that, and now we start to see stuff. And in fact, let's put it in preview. Because you can see here, here's one of the reasons why I made that one a multi-line or an auto-sized uh, label rather than fixed. Because descriptions by definition are going to be multi-line. But now what I want to do, I don't like this file name here. I mean, I want to show it, but what I thought I'd do instead is I'll actually show the picture. So if it detects that there's a file name, it's actually going to, I'm going to have a picture control here that'll display a picture. So here's how we can do that. First up, there's a bit of theory here. I do need to explain this. I'm going to come back to SharePoint for a second. We don't need the results source anymore. If you have a look at this SharePoint site, the way my daughter built her lists, is a little counterintuitive for SharePoint people. Here is a list called a library called Cat Images, and here are all of the photographs that you will see in here. Okay, so you can see here, here are a bunch of photos that have been taken. And this, this is a standard document library, right? It's just file name, modified, modified by. But interestingly, all of the metadata associated with the picture, like the name of the cat, um, you know, the latitude, longitude of where it was taken, all of that sort of stuff, that is actually being stored in a list. So there is a list called the cat image register. And this is where the actual metadata is being stored. Now SharePoint, and you can see there, what we've got, there's a column called cat images, which is a URL column that links to the photo in that cat images library. Now, the reason we did this, it's actually a pretty simple reason. Even SharePoint people might be thinking, well, why didn't you do that metadata in the document library? The simple answer is this. Power Apps at this point cannot query natively from a document library. It can only query from lists. Now, one of the nice things about Power Apps, it is actually smart enough. If that's a SharePoint URL in here, it will display it inside Power Apps for us for free. So check this out. Here's what we're going to do. Go back to Power Apps. The first thing I need to do is actually create a legitimate, another data source. I'm going to connect to SharePoint. Use the built-in SharePoint connector. And if we come down here, there is a SharePoint connector. Um, it is going to ask me to connect to a SharePoint site. I will connect to the appropriate site, which is that one. And the list that I want is the cat image register. So I'm going to connect to that list. <coughs> Okay, so now if I come back to my gallery, I'm gonna do this. First up, I'm gonna insert myself a media control and drop in an image control. That image control is going to be positioned 
pretty much, I'm going to make it a lot, lot smaller. This is you know, supposed to be a little thumbnail preview. So let's make it about that big and I will put it down about there. Okay, now I only want to show an image when we are querying the image library. I don't want to show it in any other time. So I need to control the visibility of this particular control. So if I go back to my, um, uh, my result source would be the quickest way, but I've actually got it here, I believe. Let's go back and have a look. If I go back to my cat image register here, and if I go to list settings, I can get the ID of that list. There it is there. Um, you can see 11D47, so on and so forth. 11D47, da 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 da, da up to 097, I think it would be E. That's the ID, that's the list ID of that particular list. So now if I come back to Power Apps, I'm going to do this. First up, I'm going to go to the visibility property, visible property, and I'm going to say, if this item dot list ID is equal to that ID, then let's make this visibility true. Otherwise, let's make it false. Okay, so you can see now that having done that, whoops, let me just get back to the image control. Okay, so let's test that by previewing. If I go on a preview, all right, you notice that we're not seeing the image here, but we're seeing it here. This is a good thing. So how about now let's actually make the image itself come up.